That's the old camera. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first Sunday after Christmas and uh, Boxing Day. Happy Boxing Day to one and all. We have here today one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people all together, ten souls. Um, it may be that, well, this is called Low Sunday, so that's part of the deal, but uh, also COVID numbers are high, so keep your ear to the ground. We're not sure what we'll do even next week, so maybe the elders will have a conversation about that this week and see what we think. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, announcements were just run, and they include um, things like annual reports are coming up time. Lynn's got a deadline of January the 11th for those, and uh, except the treasurers. And the annual meetings are Inglesby and Lachlan on the 23rd and Halliburton on the 30th, uh, and that'll all be by Zoom. And so you can, if you don't have the internet, you can phone in. And anybody that's you know involved with the church, whether you're a member yet or not, whatever, uh, you're invited to be part of that. Um, that's happening. And also, so not next week, but the week after, which is the first Sunday after Epiphany, we're going to uh, celebrate communion uh, one way or another. So we'll, we'll have it... Uh, so prepare elements if you're if you're at home, and we'll if we're in if we have an in-person service, we'll have the little excuse me little cups with the wafers and such. So uh, is that all I need to ta- to say, Lynn? At this point, <laughs> I, hmm? we appreciate everybody. Many many people watched our Christmas Eve service at the time and later. There were over something like 170 plus uh, views of it which is great. So thanks for, for supporting that. Um, okay, I think, I think we're, we'll have our opening prayer. Shall we pray together? Together? Generous God, God you gave your, your only, only begotten, begotten son, son to take our nature upon him and be born of your he chosen one, one, Mary. Grant, grant that, that we, we who have been, been born, born again and made your children by adoption and grace, grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, they couldn't find anybody else to do this job today, so here I am, and uh, just kidding. Uh, this is, Normally I do this, and it's good because then I get to see what everybody else is up against when they do this. That's a, that's a good thing. So I'm going to go back over to the other side, I guess. Get ready because I want to play some music. So, um, there. Is that working? Nope. Check. Sounds coming through. Okay. Uh, So I think I said everything I need to say. And. uh, we're going to, uh, Melissa's been doing a lot of instrumentals lately, and here's, uh, th- those were great, those, those ones, they were a mix, uh, once again, the cla- mix of the classical and the, and the Christmas music. I like those, those, those arrangements. So let's, uh, let's uh, quiet our hearts while we listen to another piece of music. Oh, you should wait one moment. Okay, sorry. Th- this- <gasps> Thank you. 
Thanks, Melissa. Beautiful. Once again, let there be peace on earth. So we're going to uh, repeat something we've been repeating a little, quite a bit. Oh, we, we added four to our number for those of you online. So we, we're up to 14 now because the BD gang has come in. Uh, and we're going to do Angels We Have Heard on High. And I'm going to try to keep I, I I tried to play along with Melissa on the recording from last Sunday. Oh, keep this on here. But uh, it's hard for me to keep up. i got to cable this. Hold on. And don't start till he puts the thing up. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do my cheater. See, this is a cheater. See, I think it records fast. <laughs> when I hear it play stuff playback, I'm sure it's a little faster than what I ever played. It. I don't know. You, you, you'd be surprised sometimes. <laughs> oh, oh I, need the, I need some words here, don't I? Or I can just read them off the screen if Craig can keep up. Are we ready? I had my book open and then, oh, there it is. Okay. I had a tune. Okay, we're just going to mostly rhythm section. No. Okay. Angels, we have heard. So out there and all you folks that are, are watching, happy to have you with us today. We've got to Gary, Liz, Peggy, Lisa, Joy, Jean and Warren Curry, Jan Tedford, and Jan Wayne Cox, Paul Cornish, and oh, he's got uh, Chris from Los Angeles is up. <laughs> and they celebrated Chris's birthday on Christmas Day. Interesting. Happy birthday, Chris. Uh, Eunice Pierce up in Sudbury, of course, and Alan and Alan Galt, um, from Alan and Sharon, and Jen Burke from Jan and Paul in Duro Dummer, Dummer in Peterborough. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let's see, what are we up to? 
Okay. Um, who hasn't taken up the offering lately? Meg and Craig, you guys did it on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Good, good, your arms are tired. <laughs> who will we pick on today? Maybe Lynn and Hank, because they haven't done it for a while. Okay. So it's uh, Lynn, good to, good to have you helping us out here today. Hank, happy Boxing Day to you too. All right, how, what, do we, what is it we sing? We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gifts may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Lovely. Okay, prayers. Um, I think since last Sunday, where is my prayer list? We, did we have Lisa Frost on it last week? So Lisa Frost, which is Jim Maryland's da daughter-in-law, uh, has been diagnosed with a brain tumor. She's home. She's able to come home, but she's she's got some serious. Uh, I think they're going to try radiation for a bit and then surgery. So Bill's wife. Bill's wife. Uh, Bill's wife yeah. So Lisa's on our list. Um, anybody else or any anything to add? Well, let's, uh, let's pray. O oh Lord, our God, we thank you that you are full of love and grace, kindness and patience and power. And so we seek you, we seek your face as you have called us to do and commanded us to do and encouraged us to do. Lord, because our needs are many, and we thank you that you do take care of us all the days of our lives. Lord, so we put ourselves and our needs and concerns in your hands, and we ask for your, your intervention, your healing, your help, your strength, your comfort, whatever the need might be, that you would meet it. Lord, we, we continue to pray for our world as we continue to fight this pandemic. Lord, and we pray that you would you bring an end to it. Lord, we thank you for um, vaccines and uh, other means by which we were able to guard pe people's health and... Uh, Lord, so we, we lift that to you, and we ask for your ongoing um, help with those who are, who are battling on the front lines of, of medical care and for those who are vulnerable. Uh, Lord, and those perhaps, many of whom have actually caught this disease, Lord, that they may make it well and, and fully recover. So, Lord, we lift this to you, and we ask it in your name. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. And we pray for... Uh, our concerns around those who are suffering from natural disasters in their vicinity and the people of Kentucky and people of British Columbia and of Atlantic Canada. Lord, we remember Lisa Frost, Ray Limer, Bradley Bygrave and his family, Roly Faubert, Ushi Stouffer, Olive and Jim Waugh, Eleanor Gray, Paul, Joy Cooper, Jim Lind Lid Liddell, Tuya Corpola, and Dave Paddock. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, yes. Answer. We pray for Ruth Rendell Adams, and Jan Cox, Bernie and Linda Har Harper, Mary Sechrist, Gary Swaggerman, Kelsey Barnum, Michael Broadhagen Jr., John Payne, Judy Davis, Pat Kennedy, Peter Robinson, Ron Mark Jr., and Sean Cook. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for Mark and his wife, Teresa Beach, for Carol Parnell, Kathy Bins, Amy Blanchard, Allie and Courtney, Caroline Hunter, Maureen Duquette, Chris Rusk, and John Bond. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Ron and Olive Cooper, Yolande Dehan, Don and Karen Tran, Katie Woodstra, Darko Knezovic, Steve Wigan, Sadie and Lindsay Lester, and others that we bring to you now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. For we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I shall call upon 
Debbie Bain, to come and lead us in the prayer of illumination and read our scripture. Go back one. There's it. That's what we're going. Join me in the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, give us humble and teachable and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. The scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 55. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is your name. May the Lord bless this reading. Okay. There's a bit more, but that's okay. That's part of the, that was part of the Magnificat by Mary. Um, so Craig, did we show them the Christmas tree again? Because two weeks ago when Craig was here, there was no sound and everybody panicked. There, there you go. <laughs> so the Christmas tree and the, you can't see it very well, but you can sort of see the, uh, uh, the nativity scene, which we, uh, which, uh, so Maggie and Craig put all this together with Melissa's help and, um, uh, And then we used it quite heavily for the Christmas Eve service, so it really worked out well. Thanks, guys. Um, Let me see what's going on. Scripture, okay, we're going to sing again. See amid the winter snow. You start. Watch that day. 
Have a seat. Hmm? Oh yeah, put the mic down. Sorry, that was me. Uh, be right back. <clears throat> Got a little tune for you. Um, Jen Bird, morning all from Jen. Let's... <laughs> So um, nobody's here from Lachlan or Inglesbeek, so that's good because they, they may have heard this little message before and it's tune, but there was no guitar with it before. <laughs> so let's pray first. Lord, we uh, lift our time to you as we consider your scripture, consider your mighty works and the coming of your son into this world. Lord, be with us in our hearts and minds that our, our wills might be turned to your voice and to your commands and to your, your, uh, your direction in our, in our lives, and that we may go forth with joy in our world to, to bless others. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, so you guys have heard of Randy Bachman. <laughs> so Rand, Randy Bachman and uh, Burton Cummings were kind of the, the, the main drive behind uh, the Guess Who, which was a uh, a band from the 70s that carries on, and, and uh, our friend Carl Dixon played with them after those guys had left the band later on. Uh, but uh, Randy Bachman, after the, he, he kind of left and started his own band called Bachman Turner Overdrive, and it was a very basic kind of you know, bluesy rock and roll uh, driving overdrive, like hard rock. So, and, and probably their biggest uh, biggest hit was "Taking Care of Business," right? Taking care of business. Every day. So a few years after that, Randy decided to make a Christmas song out of that. So this is actually, he wrote this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt it. Um, so so uh, and I, I heard it a few years ago, and he's, he does this vinyl tap on CBC on Saturday nights. So he does, he does this re remake of his song with, the, with Christmassy lyrics. So I'm going to try to do it. I, I can't do it very loud or I'll distort it like crazy because... I'm not on the music setting here, but uh, so, so, so. Johnny wants a motor scooter, Susie wants a new computer, Billy wants a new guitar and drum machine. Daddy wants a new Corvette, CD player and cassette. Mama wants a 14 karat diamond ring. But don't forget the girls and boys who can't afford a lot of toys. It's up to you to fill their empty plate. It's a time to share with the kiddies everywhere. That's the way to make this Christmas great. And I've been taking care of Christmas every day. Taking and on it goes. So that's all you need. <laughs> oh, jeez. You, you really are way too kind. Way too kind. Um, yeah. So I, I thought that it was an interesting, there's two verses there. You, you may, hopefully you were listening carefully to the words and not just to the heavy guitar licks. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get this back down here. Um, it, it kind of speaks of how strange Christmas is. <laughs> it's a strange beast. I mean, it's this dance of greediness <laughs> And and generosity. So Je Johnny wants a motor. You know, you get the, Santa gets the kids up on their on their lap and he encourages them to say, "What do you want?" And everybody says, oh, "This is what I want." Yeah, nothing wrong with wanting things, really. But you know, one one kind of wonders about uh, where that goes in people's expectations, right? So may, maybe there's, there's there's a certain amount of greediness that gets involved there. Uh, Susie wants a new computer. Billy wants a new guitar and drum machine. Daddy wants a new Corvette. That I can understand. CD player and cassette is a little dated. <laughs> But this is from probably 15 or 20 years ago. And mommy wants a 14 karat diamond ring. Okay. So it's, it's commercialism at its extreme. I mean, we re it really gets ramped up for Christmas, right? 
Yeah, and yet, at the same time, it's also a huge machine that drives the economy, makes jobs, helps people make ends meet. So how can we knock it? You know, it drives the economy. Um, and it, uh, we were in uh, Peterborough a couple of weeks ago shopping uh, and in the mall, and it was astonishing how quiet it was. Like, it was almost eerie. Like, it usually, like, a, a week or two before Christmas, it, the place is just shoulder to shoulder, you know, uh, elbow room to walk down the hallway, and you're, everybody's... But it was, it was really sparse, and there were stores with nobody in them and stuff. So that's scary. So without Christmas, a lot of businesses won't make it. Uh, or, or, or wouldn't make it. So it's a time of overindulgence. You know, it's not just it's not just the the, uh, the perhaps greediness or the, the you know the, the the buying of great big expensive presents and that. It's also the eating of lots of <laughs> uh, what's the word here? Let's just say food. Lots of food and drinking and imbibing of all sorts of things. That you know, there's just a, a lot of overindulgence. But at the same time, it also seems to be a time when people most often think of those who are struggling. So that's the second verse here. So Randy has the second verse. But don't forget the girls and boys who can't afford a lot of toys. There's lots of those around. It's up to you to fill their empty plate. It's a time to share with the kiddies everywhere. That's the way to make this Christmas great. So Randy's got those, those two things kind of juxtaposed there in those two verses. And so that, to me, this is love human style, right? We like to give, but our motivation is mixed. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we, we kind of range from selfless and affectionate and joyful giving to reluctant, resentful, guilt-driven giving, <laughs> and everything in between. Our God has no such mixed motivation. And to me, that's a great, uh, a great truth. He has no mixed motivation. His Everything he does is always pure love. Everything he does is pure love. So you name it, what he does is pure love. It, it may not seem obvious to us at the time, but you know we have to kind of look beyond sometimes the immediate to see see what's going on. Um, in fact, so one of the shorter one of the shorter, if not not the shortest verses in the Bible, is in First uh, John, where it just says tells us God is love. It's kind of God's self-definition of himself. If you, want to, if you want to throw one adjective or one, one noun that you know, kind of describes who I am and what I'm all about, he says, I'm love. God is love. And uh, perfect love casts out all fears in the same, uh, same very, uh, context there. So uh, creation, for instance, is love. Like God made this amazing, incredible universe and all the, it's, with all its intricacies and complexities and you know, vast <laughs> whirling galaxies that are out there and then tied down to the tiny little, you know, beyond what the microscope can see, uh, things like viruses, but even smaller than that. Uh, you know, he, he made all this in love, and it's, it's incredible. Um, then he, he pres has preserved us. He made us in love, obviously. He made us to be like him in his image and in his likeness. Uh, and he has, he has spent energy on us all the days of our lives, preserving us and, and supplying us with what we need. Uh, so, and even his discipline. This is where Christians struggle a little bit, I think. That God's discipline is love. It quite clearly, it's stated, and I think it's, oh, I should have checked my chapters, but I, I think it might be Hebrews 10, um, somewhere in there. Uh, or no, no, it's after. I think it's Hebrews, no, it might be 10. Anybody know offhand? Okay, the, light, the latter chapters of Hebrews. <laughs> and he's kind of picking up on stuff from the Old Testament, of course, and he says, you know, God, God, whom God loves, he chastises and disciplines every child that he receives. If you're without ch chastisement or, or punishment or a correction in which all have participated, you are illegitimate children and not sons and daughters of God. And all discipline at the time seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. And you know, Jesus says something very, very comparable to that, parallel to that in uh, that we find we read in John, I think it's 15. Where he talks about, he says, "You are." I, he says, "I am the vine. My father is the vine dresser, the husbandman." And he says, "And you're the branches. <laughs> you guys, you, you, my children, uh, you, my followers, are the branches off the vine. And uh, you know, if if ever your branch bears fruit, 
the vine dresser, the Father prunes you so that you might bear more fruit. And that's the tough thing about being a Christian. If you, if you actually do bear fruit, if you actually, you know, the fruit of the Spirit, if you start to grow and become more Christ-like, like, you know, you love more, you're peaceful more, you're joyful more, you're patient more, uh, he says, then he'll prune you so that you'll bear more. And that pruning is never, doesn't feel great, you know, so <laughs> it involves cutting. So, so you know, that's, that's the discipline of God, but it's in love because we are broken, fallen creatures that need to be corrected and need to be trained and need to be uh, made wise and need to be transformed. And so there's a process, and that's love. The freedom that we have is love. And that's another thing that people have a hard time getting their heads around. Why does God let people do such things as they do? And yet, from the beginning, he did. He, he set it up so that there was choice. The people say, "Why? Why did he put that tree of the knowledge of fruit? What is, tree of the knowledge of the fruit of good, and, good and evil? Right? Close. You know. So he did it in order to give us choice, because love does not control. Love does not does not treat us treat you as a puppet or a robot or a mannequin. You know, you are you are uh, you know uh, you're not an automaton. <laughs> automaton. You're 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 a free being." And that's because God loves us. He wants us to choose, you know, he, he, he seeks for us to choose him of our own free will. So that's, that's pretty amazing. That is love. In, uh, so the, the chapter on love, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, it says, uh, love does not insist on its own way. And that's a characteristic of love, that we're, we're, we're being taught to also treat others that way. We don't insist on our own way. We, we don't try to control others. Um. And all, all the other things that surround us, beauty, beauty. This universe, this creation, this world is chock full of beauty. You know, you guys are beautiful. Look, look at the beauty that we, we love beauty, so we build it into everything that we do, usually. You know, look at the, if you were here in the church, guys that aren't here in the church. See, look, me looking at the camera there, Craig. See? <laughs> you, you would see it's beautiful. I mean, the windows are shining because there's a bit of light out tonight, today, and... Uh, Beautiful colors, you know, beautiful creatures, beautiful skies and sunsets and, and stars in the, in the heavens. Uh, the place is just chock full of beauty. Um, music, just one art form. But music is, we, we just can't stop doing music and enjoying music and playing music and listening to music. because it, And God gave us music because he loves us. He knew that, that would, it would tune our, our, our whole being into, into something wonderful. And, and so music. Intelligence. We get to be intelligent. You may question that sometimes. But, you know, we are rational, conscious, self-aware beings. Uh, this is God's love that we can know as much as we know. And we have souls that deeply feel emotion. You, you may say that's a curse. <laughs> well, it, it's a mixed thing because we, we feel, along with God, uh, the sorrow and the, and the grief that comes with 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 our own brokenness and the failings of the world around us, you know, but, but we're, we're sharing that with God who feels those things too. So, but, but the joys and the love and the affection and, you know, the, the wonder that we also feel, that's because of, the, of, of God's love that he's, he's built into our system. Mary, you, you have this expression of, of, of love in the Magnificat and in this conversation between Elizabeth and Mary. They were cousins, so Elizabeth is the, the mother of John the Baptist. She's pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary's pregnant with Jesus. Elizabeth is like six months along. And uh, when, when uh, Mary goes to meet her, she says, the baby, le le it says leaped in here. I feel that's American. I feel like we say leapt, but I'm, you know, pet peeve. It doesn't matter. The, so the baby leapt in her womb when she heard the, Mary's greeting. You know, so it was a sign of, I mean, John was, was a prophet, and so he, and he, was, the, uh, he was to be the harbinger, the, the forerunner of Jesus. So already, as a, an unborn babe in the womb, he's basically announcing the coming of the Messiah. He says, and how can I be so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. She's experienced this uh, amazing love, and she's, she's, she's pouring it out in worship, right? Uh, she's worshiping. Worship, now, worship is basically declaring our appreciation for the love of God. 
We worship when we understand or realize to some degree God loves us and he loves this world and he loves people. You know, his love is, is spectacular. <laughs> it's astonishing. Now, worship is, is, that, is the response from the human heart and from the human spirit to the love of God. Um, and, of course, Mary was amazed that she was the mother of the most wondrous gift. Love, gifts and giving have a lot to do with love. I mean, mainly they're they they meant to be expression of love. And even if it's not a material gift, if you give of yourself and if you give of your time, and if you, you, know, if you give of your attention to people, you're loving them. That's love. Uh, but the most wondrous gift, of course, and the biggest expression of God's love is Jesus. I got the title. The title today is Wondrous Gift. And I pulled it from uh, the hymn which we're about to sing, which is O Little Town of Bethlehem. I don't think we've actually sung it yet this year. We haven't got that far. So, but we will sing it at the end of the service. So the, the third verse um, has got uh, this, this line in it. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So a little background to O Little Town of Bethlehem, just out of interest, in case you're interested. It's written by a guy named Phillips Brooks back in 1868. And what had happened was he, he, was, a, he was an Episcopalian priest. And I, as I'm sure you know, Episcopalian means Anglican and American, right? So it's Church of England in the United States. Uh, they're Episcopalian. So he's a, he was an Episcopalian, a.k.a. Anglican priest. And about three years before he wrote this, he got a chance to go to the Holy Land. Uh, so he, he was there. And it was, I think at that point it was under Pal- not Pal- Jor- Jordanian rule because it's changed hands a lot over the centuries, as you know. And he was in Jerusalem, and he decided on Christmas Eve to go down to Bethlehem for the, for, the, for the Christmas Eve service. And it's like, I don't know, five or ten miles away. So he, he made the trip for the five-hour Christmas Eve service. <laughs> 1865 or somewhere, something like that. So, you know, it, the town was much smaller than it is now. It, in Jesus' day, it was probably like three or four hundred people. In uh, in 1860s, it was probably three or four thousand people, and now it's like 30 or 40 thousand people, I think, something like that. It's under it's under Palestinian uh, jurisdiction, and it is you know it's all kinds of to go from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Now you have to go through all kinds of checkpoints and gates and uh, you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's it's a, it's a different place. But when he was there, he was quite thrilled and just it just soaked into his being. So then three years later, he wrote this song. O little town of Bethlehem, and it so impacted him, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. So that, that was the inspiration for it. <laughs> he, uh, he, he wasn't a musician, really. He was more of a poet. So he'd written the words, and then I think it was, uh, he, wanted, he wanted music. So he assigned the, of course, organist from the church, <laughs> cathedral, to, to, to do the music. And that, the organist's name is Louis Henry Redner. Now, the tune is called St. Louis, so I don't know if that's coincidence or he became a saint because he did it. Um, but he, 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 couldn't, he, could, he was stumped. The, the morning of Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve day, the mor- that morning, he woke up and he had the tune. Boom, this tune that we know. A little town. So, and and they, I think they per- performed it that night, the little kids and stuff. So it's just, it, I love this hymn. First verse sets the scene, I, I kind of said a little bit, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Hopes and fears. So all our hopes and fears, the, you know, are, are resolved. Are, the, the things that we hope for, you know, we, Melissa's played, let there be peace on earth. At the beginning they said, we want peace on earth. We want an end to sickness. We, we want an end to strife and, and disease of all kinds and sorrow and war and uh, pollution and climate change, all this stuff. Uh, we, we, we want the world to be put back the way it's supposed to be. And that starts with Jesus. Jesus has a plan to do that, but the beginning of that was his coming into our world as one of us, God becoming one of us. So, so he's saying in this hymn, is our hopes are met in Jesus as he comes into this world tonight. Um, the second verse kind of reflects the, the angels out in the talking to the shepherds. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep. The angels keep their watch of wondering love. Um, for Christ is born of Mary. And this, this is love. That uh, 
that the God himself comes in the form of a baby. He doesn't come in spectacular, he doesn't come with fanfare, as I'm going to mention in the next verse. Uh, he comes, and not just to, to show us what it's meant, what it really means to be human, to do it right, which he does do. You know, he lives this life of, of love and of servanthood, healing people, teaching people truth. And yet that wasn't the main thing. The main thing was to lay down his life for his friends, to lay down his life for us. That's love. So the third verse is my favorite. And when Carl Dixon did his Christmas album, I got to sing this verse <laughs> on the album, so I'm very excited about that still. And that was, I don't know, 10 years ago. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. You know? How si- this thing happened in a very off-the-wall little place in the Roman world, Roman kingdom of its day, there was no fanfare, really. I mean, there was this little thing with some shepherds and stuff, but by and large, people of the world did not know this. The press was not there. There was no fanfare. It was just, he, Jesus slipped into the world, kind of snuck in there. And I, I mentioned this Christmas Eve, and it was in dangerous territory because the king of the day wanted to kill him and tried. But, uh, yeah, he, did, he just slips in. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. And then he switches here, and he says, so... In the same way, God imparts to human hearts the blessed gift of heaven or the blessings of his heaven. So he's saying it's the same thing for you and I. Um, we don't know what's happening in your... I don't know what's happening in anybody's heart here or, or wherever. Uh, very silently, when, when people kind of just... There's, there's little miracles that happen in people's hearts and they just suddenly put their trust in Jesus. And he's, you know, he, he, he begins to live inside them. Silently, you know, just it, it's and it's this, the wondrous gift of heaven. So God imparts to human hearts the blessed gift of heaven. So this is a sweet piece of music. We're about to sing it. It reminds us of the great love that God has for this world and for each one of us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came among us as one of us, even as a baby helpless, needy, Lord, and uh, we thank you for that. We can identify with that because you identified with us. Lord, may our hearts grow in love for you. May, May you continue to enter our hearts in the same way, silently, how silently, because you are the wondrous gift of God to our world, to our lives. Lord, may our faith and our love for you continue to grow so that we may love one another and the world which which you've put us in. Lord, we ask all this in your name, Jesus our Lord, you who taught us in prayer to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's sing a little town of Bethlehem. Thanks. 
the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, that in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. Oh, now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Oh, God will